Thank you, and, and uh, Vice Chair Spiller, I appreciate very much you visiting with me about this earlier, and do want to take each one of these kind of concerns as we talk about the amendment. One, what is the mens rea for the offense on this bill, just to start with as a foundation, for your bill? Because I, I, I'm not, and I may have read over it, and I may have missed it, but I'm trying to clarify, what is the mens rea for the offense for the potential persons being deported? I think it's a strict liability as far as someone coming in. They don't have to be intentionally, I don't know how you cross a border unintentionally, but, um, but intentionally, knowingly, recklessly, or with criminal negligence, it's none of those. Okay, so if it is strict liability, and we play this out, let's say that somebody is kidnapped on the other side in Juarez, and then they are brought into the United States and they are continuing to be kidnapped through the United States, then under your mens rea of strict liability, that individual would be in violation of your provision of SB4, correct? Well, they wouldn't be under attempt to enter because if they didn't attempt to enter, they, they were taken here. They are entered. Right, you're, you're saying on the first, not attempt to enter, but actually enter. They, they crossed the border, they right. crossed the border illegally, and they did it because they were kidnapped or trafficked. And again, you're not asking the question, did somebody intentionally or knowingly or recklessly enter? As you said, this is strict liability. The body came over the border, they're now in violation of SB4. Right, and, and I don't necessarily disagree that that is strictly the way that the statute reads. Uh, you know, you've prosecuted cases. I, I, I don't know what prosecutor would want to take that case and say, hey, we're going to prosecute these folks and either put them in jail or whatever when they were actually the victim and kidnapped. But, but that's but nonetheless, the point. Yes. I wouldn't want to prosecute the person that was bound up and put in the back of the truck and brought over because the perpetrator had the intent of trafficking them. I would want to prosecute the person that bound them up. You know what a gorilla pimp is? A gorilla pimp is somebody that takes you by force, throws you in a vehicle, and this stuff happens. I have seen it on cases where we've had undercover officers that they've tried to do it to the officer. It is real. So a gorilla pimp binds you up, takes you, throws you in the truck, and wants to drive you to Houston with the intent that they're gonna sell you on the track. I wouldn't wanna prosecute the person that was bound and drugged and dragged but under your bill, the officer that shows up would have to say, hey, you're not a citizen. You didn't cross at a legal point of entry. You gotta go. Well, and that's why this amendment would say, no, they are potentially a victim of a U visa having been kidnapped or sexually assaulted or even potentially a T visa. But those visas are not automatic. So I'm with you if you wanna change the issue of pending and have something about pending and ongoing, yeah. but I can't get that I can't get that authorization overnight to have that witness remain as a witness against the perpetrator. Right. right, and I would agree with you. If if someone kidnaps someone, bounds them, any of those things, yes, that's the that's the main perpetrator. That those are the bad guys. Those are the folks that we want to go after. And I would submit to you, no, that's not the subject of my bill, but there are countless other bills that we have in our state pending right now in the Texas Penal Code that would prevent that and hopefully that we could prosecute that if we could prove it. No, but, it won't prevent the deportation of the witness. That's my whole key. This was right. my same key last week. I'm asking you not to deport the witness. I get that there are plenty of offenses to go after the perpetrator, but if I don't have a live witness to show up and testify against that individual, it is an absolute get out of jail free card. Right. And, I, and I've said before, and, that, and I'm, I'm, maybe I haven't said it in the last two weeks here, but I'll say it today. Certainly law enforcement has the ability to ascertain what they, how they want to handle a particular situation. We know that there are situations where there are victims, there are children, there are women, that if things have happened, and that those people are currently processed and they're turned over to Border Pro now and, and they're processed through the due course of the federal system. Law enforcement still has that ability to do that. in each one of those circumstances. This is not taking anything away from that. You're assuming, and, and I understand, but you're assuming that if someone is, is bound and kidnapped and brought over here, 
that they're somehow going to be prosecuted. And I'm telling you, I, I would give credit to law enforcement and say that, you know, they've got the good judgment to decide who's prosecuted and who's not and they who's don't. arrested and who's not. So this is why, and I didn't get to ask you about this a couple weeks ago, but they don't have the good judgment. We just passed a bill that says that DAs can't say, I'm not going to prosecute a certain crime. And now you're saying that some police officers can make the determination, I'm going to take this person in and deport him or I'm not. How do we make that determination? What is in your bill that gives instruction to Laporte ISDPD versus Federal Task Force on Child Trafficking? What gives them the direction to say, if it's a 14-year-old that was raped in the back of the truck driven over a border, don't apply this law, but if it's a 14-year-old that's jeans were too tight or was wearing a crop top and looked like she was into it, then do. Do you, do you see how I'm showing the I do. absurd I do. nature of claiming that one law enforcement individual over another can make a determination in violation of the plain right. meaning of your strict liability statute? Well, and let me let me back up a second because I may have misspoke some. And under, yes, that if someone doesn't meet the requirements of intentionally, knowingly, recklessly, or with criminal negligence, but uh, section 6.02 of the penal code provides that if there's no mens rea or nothing prescribed that you use uh, the standard well, of uh, recklessness. Because I, I so, don't want to put the wrong thing in the record because I think this is important. There is mens rea but then there's still strict liability. So for example on trafficking of a child you don't have to know that they're under the age of 18. It's a strict liability statute. And so here, when you say there's mens rea, there's always mens rea, but the mens rea would be, from my reading of yours, the body went from one point of the border on the other side of the border and didn't go through a legal point of entry. Right. And Is that accurate or not accurate? Because I do well, think that's a very important point. What I'm saying is, I think under the scenario that you've previously described, while I was thinking that it was uh, strict liability, I'm, what I'm saying is, uh, upon further reflection, that there would be a certain element of recklessness, and the and the victim, the person that is kidnapped, that's brought over, that you just gave the example of, would not have acted recklessly. There's nothing that that person did, so therefore they but, would be exempt from prosecution. So based you got to show example. me where that is before we get lost on this point, because he's about to bang, bang that gavel. Yeah. It's 6.02C of the penal code. But that's mens rea on the penal code. Where does that apply in here? Gentlemen, time's expired.